Hey everyone. hey everyone, welcome back welcome to Dev Radio, Radio where we're talking we're to talking cloud to solution cloud architects, architects about, really about really cool, really stuff, cool they're stuff they're doing in the cloud. In the cloud. And today, today I'm really excited, excited to talk to with Ted Malone. Malone. He's, a He's a cloud solution architect out of Arizona, Arizona and he's doing some, some really interesting, interesting stuff with continuous, continuous integration and continuous delivery within Azure Data Factory. Ted, I know you're showing a slot right now, but I want to welcome you on the show. And I really want to hear about this topic because this would be completely new ground for me. Thank you for coming on. All right. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate your uh, time and uh, the effort that you've uh, gone to put all this together. This series is awesome for the uh, cloud solution architect community. It's It's been a really neat thing to uh, participate in, and I'm really honored that you uh, asked me to, to present here on this topic. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. For those, yeah, you got it, man. Yeah, so for those of us that you know, kind of work in the data world, so... My entire career, I focused on on the data platform, and I was been very, very fortunate enough to be involved with Azure from the very beginning. And one of the things that seems to be a little bit behind the times and has always been this way is really data from a continuous integration and continuous delivery, you know, perspective. So we do a really great job with our application development and CI/CD, um, but data always seems to be a little bit behind behind the times, and we're finally kind of catching up with that and allowing for some new features in Data Factory and Azure DevOps that allow us to kind of make data operations a first-class citizen within the overall kind of DevOps life cycle, if you will. Um, and so what I like to do is I, I call this data ops. And, you know, that, that term is out there in the wild. It's, it's been used for various things. But what I consider data ops to be is really the integration of the data life cycle, which is taking your data, turning it into information, extracting knowledge, gaining insight, and driving action. So those are really the things that happen in a data ops pipeline from my perspective. And of course, all of those things, and specifically the first three parts, taking your data, turning it into information, and extracting knowledge, that's really what Data Factory is all about, right? And so the idea that we would bring those components into our overall DevOps environment is a really important kind of thing. Now, the downside to all of this is there's not a lot of prescriptive guidance that Microsoft has provided around here. This whole idea is kind of a new thing, um, not only for us, but for the industry as a whole. So there are some very specific guidelines, and you know I've only got 10, 15 minutes to talk about this. I can talk about this topic for hours and days. All right, um, so just kind of keep that in mind. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna really skirt the surface here um, for everything, but at the end of the day, when we think of DevOps, we think of our three basic development you know environment, and it's it's really our dev environment where the developers live, our test environment where all of the fruits, if you will, of, of what the devs do are, are put to the test and made sure that they can, um, can survive in the wild, if you will, and then our production environment where our actual running code lives, those three environments. Now, from a data perspective, we have to be able to develop and work in all three of those environments. The challenge with a tool like Azure Data Factory is how do we do that and keep control of our release pipelines and everything. And so one of the things about Data Factory is that it does integrate directly with Git, whether it's on GitHub, whether it's in Azure um, DevOps, wherever. Git is kind of the, the heart of the source control methodology. And so typically when we think of kind of our, our source tree, you know, we have our various branches, right? We have our trunk, our master branch, 
And then we have feature branches. We might have a collaboration branch. Um, we might have a hot fix branch, depending on what it is that uh, we're looking at. But all of these branches of our code, if you think about a tenant of DevOps in general, is that the trunk or the master branch is something that should always be releasable. We should never have the master branch in a condition where it can't be release, released at that particular time. From a data perspective, that provides quite a bit of a, a challenge because you know a lot of things are schema bound, they're tightly coupled, um, everything kind of needs to fit together. So understanding that aspect of it and really taking to heart the fact that we never make a change to the master branch that will prevent us from going to production with that branch. We think we think about that, then we can kind of incorporate our data lifecycle into our overall release pipeline. Now, one of the challenges that developers have from a data perspective, specifically with Data Factory, is because they're all integrated, or Data Factory is integrated with Git, we think of our three separate environments, right? Our dev, our test, and our production environments um, for that. And we think about integrating all of them into the source control tree, right? Well, the challenge becomes now, well, which of these branches do we integrate with dev, which do we integrate with UAT, and which do we integrate with prod? The best way to think about a true DevOps lifecycle for a data ops perspective is to think in terms of you only integrate your source environment, your Git environment, with the dev environment. So developers, when they're working on their collaboration branch, they're working on the feature branches, they're working on the hotfix branch, whatever it is that they're doing, they will always publish that information into the dev environment and only the dev environment. And then that's where DevOps kind of takes over. What we do is we create a release pipeline that's triggered any time a developer publishes something to the dev environment, then that release pipeline is triggered and moves the data, the whole component, into the user acceptance test perspective. Now, a lot of this requires an understanding of the mechanics of Data Factory and how it works. Simply put, when you publish from Data Factory, what you're actually doing is collecting all of the code, the JSON artifacts from Data Factory, and combining them with the ARM template necessary to deploy that particular environment, and then you're deploying it into the Data Factory execution environment. So that's really what's happening behind the scenes. So based on that, what we can do is we can take those artifacts that are collected as part of that publish environment and we can attach them into our artifacts inside of DevOps. And then now that we've done that, we can now move that whole collection of the, the JSON artifacts that represent our data pipelines along with the ARM template that represents everything necessary to deploy that and push that from dev into UAT. We can then run our automated tests associated with that, maybe some smoke tests that are, are developed to ensure that the data flows through. And then we can, once those tests are passed, we can then trigger the release of that from UAT through another DevOps pipeline into the production environment. So, in, you know, kind of summary for all of that, how this all works, we only integrate a single data factory with the uh, Git, our source environment, and that would be the development environment. That's the only one that has any interaction with our, our source control environment, our repository. And then what we do is we make sure that we identify and collect all of the assets that are generated when we publish from that environment into the ADF publish branch that's part of this. 
And then we collect those artifacts and we make them part of a pipeline that is then released into UAT. Our tests are done and we take those same artifacts and we move them through a release pipeline into the production environment. What that enables us to now do is every single time a developer will publish from their environment into the dev, it will then automatically get picked up, tested, and deployed. And so we're making sure that our master branch is always, always uh, deployable, number one. And number two, we're making sure that we are taking our data assets, our pipelines, and making them part of our overall continuous integration and continuous delivery lifecycle. As I said, I can talk about this stuff for hours and days, um, but I think that'll give everybody kind of a high level of what it is that we're talking about here. And I'll tell you what, this is a passion of mine, so I would love to have any comments or you know any discussion around this um, that, that we need to, to have. I'll tell you, so Ted. Otherwise, Ted. that's kind of it. I was going to say, this is all so fascinating. Sounds just like all the best, all the best practices, practices we talk about when we talk about, when we talk about all the other ops, like ML ops, like ops DevOps. Dev ops. Um, for those, for who, those who are on this channel regularly, we even have a series of videos where we went into some of the same things um, on the developer side where we're doing Azure pipelines to do builds, and then we're building out an artifact, and we pushing that artifact to different environments and gating and triggering things based upon you know tests being ran. So it sounds like a lot of the best practices that we're already learning on this channel can be applied here. Um, on the, on the data, data side of your side company's, of your company's um, business. business. And Ted, I'll tell you, I'll tell you um, if you want, ever want to jump on the channel and upload some, some like, like videos, videos and examples and, and really go at it with more than welcome it, because, because this, this is absolutely, absolutely fascinating, fascinating to see how a lot of the same principles, myself as a, as a web developer, um, have to apply to my own projects, how they apply here, just slightly different, but a lot of the meat of it is the same. Yeah, you know, that, that's a really good point that you just made and, and one that bears kind of repeating. As a, as a web developer, historically speaking, you would think of the data as just that thing that was out there somewhere. You know, the database was out there. I know I have to connect to it, but it's not really part of my dev process other than maybe I have to get some reference data and things like that. And what we're talking about here is taking all those best practices that you've perfected over the years, right? And bringing that data element into that so that the data pipeline becomes just part of your release pipeline. Exactly. exactly. You nailed it. You nailed it. Um, Ted, um, Ted, thank you so thank much, you for, so coming much for coming on. And coming you're just going to get us, gonna excited, gonna get us excited, excited to get you back get you on and talk on more about this. Maybe get some videos, videos with some demos. Some demos. Um, really, 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 really excited, really excited that you're able to share this with everyone. Everyone else... Please subscribe Please to the channel. We're going to continue to have, to have um, really interesting, interesting videos. videos. We're going to continue, continue to have CSH, CSH jump, on jump on and help us out with um, lots of different lots cool of things that they're doing. That they're doing. Um, um, we, will we will be back, be back next, next time, time again with, again some, with more some more interviews. Thank you again Thank for, you your for your time. Your time. Yeah, thank you.